All right, here we go. Gonna jump right into it. With everything that's been going on lately, um, we are in March and a lot of people are quarantined or working from home. So certainly uh, things like WebEx, Zoom, and other types of teleconferencing software uh, has been very popular. And Zoom, as you can see here, uh, Zoom meetings are very, very popular. I've seen this a lot in the news with um, things like classrooms and that. I figured I would take a look at this article entitled, Zoom Meetings Aren't End-to-End -end Encrypted Despite Misleading Marketing. And this was an article by The Intercept by this Micah Lee and Yazel Grower. I really probably butchered that name, so I apologize. But um, it starts off here with Zoom, the video conferencing service whose use has spiked amid the COVID-19 pandemic, claims to e implement end-to-end -end encryption, widely understood as the most private form of internet communication, protecting conversations from all outside parties. In fact, Zoom is using its own definition of the term, one that lets Zoom itself access unencrypted video and audio from meetings. With millions of people around the world working from home in order to slow the spread of the coronavirus, business is booming for Zoom, bringing more attention on the company and its privacy practices, including a policy later updated that seemed to give the company permission to mine messages and files shared during meetings for the purpose of ad targeting. <laughs> Still, Zoom offers reliability, ease of use, and at least one very important security assurance. As long as you make sure everyone in a Zoom meeting connects using computer audio instead of calling in on a phone, the meeting is secured with end-to-end -end encryption, ahem, at least according to Zoom's website. But really, it offers what is usually called transport encryption. Now, hang with me here. This is important because it's not the same as end-to-end -end encryption. When a host starts a meeting with the require encryption for third-party endpoints setting enabled, participants see a green padlock that says Zoom is using an end-to-end -end encrypted connection when they mouse over it. But when reached for comment about whether the video meetings are actually end-to-end -end encrypted, a Zoom spokesperson wrote, Currently, it is not possible to enable E2E encryption for Zoom video meetings. Zoom video meetings are, use a combination of TCP and UDP. TCP is transmission control protocol, and those connections are made using TLS and UDP. TLS is transport layer security. UDP is user datagram protocol. AES is the advanced encryption standard using a key negotiated over that transport layer security connection. So E2E end-to-end -end encryption is very, very secure. If we keep going, the encryption that Zoom uses to protect meetings is TLS, transport layer security the same technology that web servers use to secure a standard uh, hypertext transfer protocol secure websites. This is known as transport encryption, which is different from end-to-end -end encryption because the Zoom service staff can access the unencrypted video and audio content of Zoom meetings. So when you have a Zoom meeting, the video and audio content will stay private from anyone spying on your Wi-Fi, but it won't stay private from the company. Hmm. Where have we heard this before? <clears throat> Facebook. <clears throat> Matthew Green, a cryptographer and computer science professor at John Hopkins University, points out that group video conferencing is difficult to encrypt end-to-end. -end. They're a little bit fuzzy about what's end-to-end -end encrypted, Green said of Zoom. I think they're doing this in a slightly dishonest way. It would be nice if they just came clean. Without end-to-end -end encryption, Zoom has the technical ability to spy on private video meetings and could be compelled 
to hand over recordings of meetings to governments or law enforcement in response to legal requests, while other companies like Google, Facebook, and Microsoft publish transparency reports that describe exactly how many government requests for user data they receive from which countries and how many of those they comply with, Zoom does not publish a transparency report. Now, I know this is a bit of a pain in the butt, but it just hang with me here because we're almost done. Who exactly is using Zoom? Teachers? Librarians? Okay, that seems fine. Not too bad. Uh, what about medical professionals? Are they using Zoom to talk with their patients at home? What about patient privacy? Where is this data going? What is the purge cycle for it? This could very quickly spiral into a big issue for people with issues that are not only sensitive, but protected by law. Those are the HIPAA standards. Be careful and ask questions. Thank you very much. Take care, and we'll see you next video.